In this video, we look at the molecular orbital diagram of some diatomic molecules. The vertical axis of an MO diagram is the orbital energy. Orbital energies are always negative, so we place a zero point high up. First, let's look at dinitrogen, N2. As always, we are using a minimal basis of atomic orbitals to approximate the molecular orbitals. This is sufficient for capturing many qualitative aspects of the molecule. The relevant atomic orbitals of nitrogen are the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital, and the 3 2p orbitals, the 2pz orbital, the 2px, and the 2py orbital. We draw them on the left for one nitrogen atom, and on the right for the second nitrogen atom. We need a computer to calculate the exact energies of the resulting molecular orbitals, but we can use some basic rules to get the essential aspects. Here are the rules. You obtain strong MO splitting from a pair of atomic orbitals under the following three conditions that all have to be satisfied. First, the atomic orbitals must have the same symmetry. If not, the overlap is necessarily zero. Second, the atomic orbitals must have similar energies. The larger the energy difference between the two atomic orbitals, the smaller the molecular orbital splitting. Third, the atomic orbitals must actually overlap in space. Let's apply the rules to nitrogen. The two 1s orbitals are of the same symmetry, of similar energy, but don't overlap, since they are very concentrated on each nitrogen atom. Therefore, the MO splitting is small. The resulting MOs are the bonding 1 sigma g and the antibonding 1 sigma u star. The two 2s orbitals, on the other hand, do have significant overlap. Therefore, we get two MOs with significant splitting. The two sigma g bonding orbital and the two sigma u star antibonding orbitals. The p orbitals are not all equivalent. The pz orbital is along the bond and has sigma symmetry, whereas the two others are perpendicular to the bond and have pi symmetry. The two pz orbitals of the two atoms overlap head to head and give rise to a bonding and an antibonding MO. Three sigma g and three sigma u star. The px and py orbitals overlap sideways and give rise to two degenerate bonding and two degenerate antibonding MOs. They are called 1 pi ux and 1 pi uy for the bonding orbitals and 1 pi g x and 1 pi g y for the antibonding orbitals with asterisks. From experiment and numerical calculations, we know that the pi bonding MOs lie below the 3 sigma g. Now, neutral N2 has a total of 14 electrons. Let's fill in the electrons for the ground state. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The electrons fill all the MOs up to the three bonding MOs originating from the p orbitals. We see that all electrons are paired, and the overall spin, s, is zero. We have a singlet. The three sigma g is the highest occupied MO, or homo. And the 3 sigma u star is the lowest unoccupied MO, or LUMO. Now let's define the bond order. The bond order, it is the number of electrons in bonding MOs minus the number of electrons in antibonding MOs, all divided by 2. For dinitrogen, we have 10 bonding electrons and 4 antibonding electrons. So we get a bond order of 3. 
we have a triple bond corresponding to the usual Lewis structure of dinitrogen. Autodiatomics with an MO diagram with the same order of MOs, like here, are lithium-2, beryllium-2, boron-2, and carbon-2. Of course, the MO energies and the number of electrons will be different for these species, but the order is the same. Next, let's look at dioxygen, O2. The atomic orbitals are 1s, 2s, and again, 3 times 2p on the left, and the same on the right. The MOs are 1 sigma g and 1 sigma u star. two sigma g and two sigma u star three sigma g and three sigma u star and finally the degenerate pi orbitals we have one pi ux 1 pi uy, 1 pi gx star, and 1 pi gy star. There's a clear difference between n2 on the left and o2 on the right. The 3 sigma g lies below the pi orbitals in o2. We know this from experiment and numerical calculations. The MO order for dioxygen is also valid for F2 and for neon2. Together, the two MO diagrams on this slide cover all the homonuclear diatomics of the second row of the periodic table. Let's fill in the electrons for the ground state. The oxygen has 16 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The last two electrons go into the two degenerate antibonding pi orbitals, one in each, 15, 16. As a result, we have two unpaired electrons, a total spin of one, and a triplet molecule. Triplet. The bond order is two. We usually draw dioxygen with a Lewis structure, with that double bond in a Lewis structure. This notation is clearly too simplistic as it does not show that there are two unpaired electrons. In summary, we have seen how to construct MO diagrams for homonuclear diatomics. The three basic rules to determine MOs from AOs are based on the symmetry, on the energy difference and on the spatial overlap of the atomic orbitals. We have defined the bond order, which is a simple measure for the strength of a bond based on the MO diagram. And we have derived from the MO diagrams that dinitrogen is a spin singlet, whereas dioxygen is a spin triplet in its ground state.